methods of phylogenetic reconstruction. So what is this phylogenetic reconstruction? That is nothing but, you know, making the tree, you know, the phylogenetic tree. So why it is called reconstruction, not just construction? Because you, you never know how this happened in the past, right? All we have is uh, extant sequences or extant species. Uh, species 1, 2, 3, 4. So what are the relations between these sequences or genes or species? That is what you are reconstructing, you know, that the, you are illustrating through the tree. Uh, something like your own family, you know, the close relative and like first cousin, then second cousin, the third cousin. So then, uh, you know, the, the relation between all these uh, relatives of your family, you can draw it on a piece of paper like a tree. Uh, connecting the nodes you know so that kind of uh, reconstruction is that is what you call the phylogen reconstruction so basically uh, in the past you never know what really happened so you're on just reconstructing mainly two methods of reconstruction is distance based method and then discrete based so distance based is also known as phonetic based approaches and clustering uh, algorithms you know all these methods you can actually uh, use it uh, interchangeable all these terms you can use it so phonetic clustering together you can use it right and uh, what are the uh, common distance based methods minimum evolution and UPGMA that is uh, unweighted pair group method using arithmetic averages neighbor joining method and Fitch Margoliars method these four are the common distance based me method Discrete or cladistic or optimality based methods, maximum parsimony, maximum likelihood and Bayesian inference, these three methods. So in general, these two methods, you know, so the, the second method, discrete or cladistic or optimality based method tend to be more rigorous. You know, so it is a little bit more complicated, but it's much more preferable, but it takes time. But the first method, the distance or clustering methods are much more faster. So it's a good for heuristic, you know, uh, but it's not that accurate. That is a, the, the difference between these two methods. Okay. So, yeah. So uh, the main difference between these two approaches is that distance, calculate the distance matrix first. As the name says, distance. So every kind of this like neighbor joining uh, from the input, you know, multiple sequence alignment. First step is to calculate the distance matrix. Like you remember that I was telling you about the map of India in different cities, the distance between these two cities, you know. So the triangular fashion, but the other part of the triangle, you can avoid it because it's redundant, right? So only one half you can see that. So that is called distance matrix. And from distance matrix, these approaches, this distance based method produce one tree, you know. At the same time, the second option, the second method, discrete method doesn't have this distance. And instead of just one tree, it produces multiple trees and then use heuristic method like MCMC MC algorithm, Monte Carlo simulation, very interesting name, right? And uh, to choose the best or optimal tree among millions of trees. So that is the, the main difference. Why distance method is not that good? The reason is that it constrain all information into the number. For example, human and chimp. The difference you can say 98.6 percentage is the whole genome difference between a human and a chimpanzee. So that means that the distance is uh, approximately what 1.6 percentage. So that number you are constraining everything. You don't really see where exactly the difference is it actually in the functional gene or in the intron or intergenic spacer or telomere uh, you will never know if you're constructing with this distance based method but discrete method look at each position separately so that you can wait so it's a lot more accurate but it takes a lot of time you know so the clustering algorithms that is what the distance based approach right the clustering all these are same phonetic methods it used distance to calculate the phylogenetic trees and these trees are based solely on the relative numbers of similarities and differences of between the extant sequence. So it starts with a matrix of pairwise distance and then it constructs the tree by linking the least distant that is most similar pairs of the taxa that is the first step followed by successively more distant taxa you know. So that is how it actually do that one one good example would be minimum evolution uh, one of the simplest one. So the idea of minimum evolution as captured by 
the name of this method is that evolution distances should be minimized you know simpler is the best the same phenomenon i mean the same principle of this uh, uh, the, you know the the occam's razor right so total length of all branches in the tree should be minimum so you are minimizing the branch length you know so how to draw a tree from a distance matrix with the least distance connecting between the knots so it has been shown that the maximum evolution tree is expected to be the true tree provided branch lengths are corrected for multiple hits so how do you correct to accommodate these multiple hits by adopting various models of molecular evolution right that we have already covered so one example would be uh, from this distance matrix that is observed distances of this human we have already seen this matrix earlier right human mouse fugu and drosophila you are drawing a tree to minimize the distance between that so this is the optimal tree the patristic distances is presented here the patristic distance means the distance between all these things so this distance and this distance is all same you know so here you can see that the least is three that is mouse and fugu is the the least one so that the least distance means most similar so what does this number three means from mouse to go to fugu you know the distance is only the lateral distance you're looking not the horizontal right so here it is one number one number one number one so one plus one plus one is three you know and now 14 means human to drosophila this is the least similar most distant so five plus one plus two plus six is 14 that is what it says so that is called the minimum distance the next method is called upgma so you know what is this UPG? It's, a, it's one of again it's a simple method that is unweighted pair group method using arithmetic averages. So it it generates something called dendrogram. The other method like the, we are going to say the advanced method generate cladogram. Well, this is dendrogram and this is a rooted dendrogram. So you know it's already rooted. You don't have to put the roots and it's ultrametric. That means from the tip to the the root every single branch has the same distance you know so that is what ultra so usually ultrametric trees are not that reliable right so that is uh, yeah that is how it is and also internal not joining these two halves are always halfway between them in the upgma so ultrametric trees are usually not addictive what does that mean branch lengths are not proportional to the evolutionary distance between the sequence you know so usually in the phylogram you are drawing the branch length proportional to the evolutionary distances but in the case of upgma because it is ultra metric same branch length uh, you know it is not proportional you know so again that is not good isn't it so phylep is a software that you can use for the upgma i mean any kind of uh, phylogenetic inference you can use this kind of upgma it's very simple uh, in in the phylep you can use dna based or pro test for protein based or dna based upgma you know and many multiple alignment programs like PyLab uses the variant of the UPGMA to create a dendrogram of the DNA sequence which is then used to guide the multiple alignment algorithm. For example, here you're starting, uh, you know, we are starting with a distance matrix, of course, the distance matrix. And as you can see that A to A distance is zero. And after this line, there are two triangle and these both of these are mirror images 32 32 24 24 like that right so it's redundant or you can just look at this first up is that which is the least dissimilar you know so least distant or highly similar so you can see point one is a and b is the least similar so point one so first up is you combine a and b together you make a, the first node between you join this a and b branches together that is our first step, you know, A and B is joined. Then second step number two in the UPGMA is you're combining A and B to form A plus B. So here you can see the second distant matrix you are writing after you put this node A plus B. So instead of A and B, it's, you're combining these two together A plus B, A plus B. Here also you are putting A plus B, you know, so either of this you can try, but in this case we are using on both sides of the triangle, right? A plus B here. Now, how do you calculate now the distance? A to C is, uh, you know, 0.20, B to C is 0 
Now a plus b to c is in between these two 0.2 plus 0.24 divided by 2 or just in between this 0.2 to 0.24 this 0.22 that is why it is arithmetic average is con considered for the UPGMA. I hope it's clear. So a plus b to c you calculated sim similarly a plus b to d how do you how did you arrive 0.35 because a to d is 0.34 b to d is 0.36 so 0.34 plus 0.36 divided by 2 so there is in between these two the arithmetic average is 0.35 right so draw everything completely a plus b just that the step is just combined a plus b because you, you have already joined these two branches together right a and b you already combined these two knots together now the, the next step is look at here this which is the uh, in a lowest distance so because it's a distance matrix it's not similarity matrix is distance matrix here i can see instantly this is the least similar d and e right d to e 0 0.20 same 0 0.20 here this is the least similar and then what is the next step yeah you guessed it d and e should form another node right now the distance between d and e is 0 0.20 while distance between a and b initially had been 0 0.10 so this branch length is 0 0.1 then it should be double right branch length is drawn proportional to the uh, evolutionary changes so you can write here d and e and you draw another branch but it should be double the distance should be double to it so no isn't it so like this d and e you, you combine it together fine so that is the next step and then what is the the, the next step so it's basically you have to recalculate d and e you're combining you know so d to a plus b is 0.35 e to a plus b is 0.39 now if you combine d plus e like this then to calculate you have to calculate the average of these two values 0.35 plus 0.39 divided by 2 is 0.37 like that here also 32 plus 34 by 2 is 33 like that you did it what is the next step look the lowest the least similar dissimilar 0.22 here the c is related to a plus b isn't it 0.22 c and a plus b so that means you need to draw C here, somewhere here, 0.22 is a distance. So it's almost, this is 0.2, right? Almost like this little bit more, isn't it? So you have to draw like this, 0.22, isn't it? Yes, so that way you can actually calculate the, and now coming to the next step is completely, you know, that, that that's it for the tree you're combining together. You know, all these two nodes you're joining together. So that is how the UPGMA is performed. I hope it's clear to you. So you can do the same UPGMA for our uh, Fugu uh, distance matrix, right? Fugu, mouse and human and uh, Drosophila. From this matrix, can you make the, the tree? So first up is to see the most uh, similar, uh, you know, pair. So it's basically, uh, you know, number two, isn't it? Mouse and human is the most uh, similar. So you have to actually join mouse and human to put this number in it and then so you can actually use the character the p distance matrix earlier we have already presented you can use that or you can use just the same empirical uh, distance matrix to see how you know how to construct the UPG geometry coming next is called neighbor joining method in which you know as the name say neighbors are joined together so it's again generate an unrooted addictive tree it is unrooted you know, it is not rooted, but it's unrooted. There is a difference between UPGM and this, right? Uh, that minimizes the sum of branch length. So Saito and Nei, the Japanese scientists have decided, uh, designed this method. Again, that is an extension of the Occam's razor concept, which is used often in phylogeny, like minimum evolution, the first method which we saw. Uh, and also parsimony that we are going to cover up later. Uh, which is a cladistic method more advanced method so all these methods are based on the Occam's razor uh, that to go with simple method rather than complicated if uh, you know there is no significant difference between these two methods you know so neighbor joining is probably the most uh, 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 I mean the best method uh, among the distance based methods 
you know uh, among various business methods this is very co uh, commonly used and uh, uh, probably the most statistically sound and uh, most accepted me method you know so what is this neighbor means it is uh, it can be defined as two taxa that have a single knot between them that means the most similar isn't it in the upgma the most similar taxa the least distant taxa is called neighbor so neighbor joining defines the closest neighbors on the basis of both distance between them and average distance from all other tax that is also being considered not just that these two uh, you know they have the least distance between these two that is the only thing which we considered in the upgma but for this we are also considering uh, the distance from other tax in our data set that is also being factored in for the neighbor joining you know so yeah it is really popular method and it corrects the upgm the earlier method for its frequently invalid assumption that the same rate of evolution applies to each branch of the tree so that uh, assumption we are not taking in the uh, the neighbor joining method and distance matrix is adjusted for the differences in the rate of evolution for each taxon that means each branch you are adjusting separately so you know neighbor joining gives the best result in simulation studies and is the most computationally efficient of the distance algorithm so among the distance algorithm nj is the most popular and most best so it it works like this see uh, you are starting with all you know uh, like every single branch in it and from here you have to identify which two are the neighbors by looking at of course you are looking at the distance matrix as well as the distance from the average distance from uh, you know each one to all the rest you know so these two factors are considered and then decided that one and four are the neighbors and then you are forming a knot between them then you are doing the same procedure for the the rest of this particular uh, you know the 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 knot you know so you can see that this is a polytomy this kind of uh, uh, clustering is called polytomy polytomy means from one node multiple clusters no it's not really accurate right so this shows that data is insufficient so it is not resolved yet so it's a pr process of refining this uh, you know this uh, polytomy so finally it's after multiple steps you're going to get uh, you know unrooted tree which is fully resolved only one tree that is what the neighbor joining tree is and the proponents say this is the best tree but we now know it is not the best tree because it's coming from a distance matrix the numbers it doesn't look at the individual variation at each site and that is why we have much better methods these days called cladistic method or character based methods of uh, phylogenetic reconstruction that we will discuss later